Hey there, and welcome back to another episode of the Heal Deal Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Leona Allen, and I'm here to help you achieve more freedom in your health and your life. Today, we'll be diving into a topic that resonates with so many of us. I'll be addressing a concern that many of you have, the quest for healthy, sustainable weight loss. But before we jump in, let me share a quick personal story. A little over 10 years ago, I was in the same place like many of you were. After the birth of my two sons, I was 70 pounds overweight. And I figured, you know, after a few months, I would bounce right back. But when my second son was a year old, that wasn't the case. And I found myself not only frustrated, but embarrassed because as a health and wellness doctor, I couldn't believe that this was happening to me. Here I am trying to help other people get their health back and lose weight, but I couldn't do it for myself. And I was active. I figured I ate better than most, and I took my handful of supplements every day. But the weight just wouldn't come off. But fortunately for me and for the women I have helped, this frustration encouraged me to go deeper into what was truly required to achieve healthy, sustainable weight loss. Now, fast forward 10 years, here I am at the age of 52, and not only have I discovered what it takes to lose weight, but to keep it off. So so if you've been struggling to lose weight or keep it off, and you felt like you have tried everything, including low carb, keto, juicing, meal plans, or even medications, you're in the right place. Today, I'll be discussing the three strategies for accelerating healthy weight loss. Now, I didn't say quick weight loss, but accelerating healthy weight loss. Let's start with the basics by peeling back some of the layers and getting to the core of healthy weight loss. It's crucial to understand that no magic pill, potion, or lotion can replace the fundamental principles of a balanced lifestyle. The foundation of weight loss is getting healthy enough to lose weight. Yes, we must focus on the health. In other words, you don't lose weight to get healthy. You focus on getting healthy to lose the weight. It's about breaking down those barriers that are preventing your body from burning fat. Losing weight is a metabolic process. What that means is that your metabolism is the process by which the body changes the food you eat into energy that your body requires to function. This includes breathing, sending blood through the body, digestion, and growing and repairing cells. Before we dive into the strategies, let's debunk a few myths. Myth number one, eat less and exercise more. Chances are you've been there and done that and it didn't work. You may have lost some weight initially, but what happened when you started eating normally again? The weight came back and they brought some friends. And it gets worse when you repeat the cycle over and over again. Calorie restriction never works for long-term solutions. Most of the weight loss is muscle, not fat, and your metabolism gradually gets slower and slower. For calorie restriction to work, you have to continuously restrict more calories in order to lose more weight. Many of the low-calorie foods you see on the grocery shelves are typically unhealthy and lack nutrients. They are mainly loaded with chemicals and dead ingredients that harm the body more than nourish the body. So it's really about the quality of the calories and not the quantity. You have been told that you need to exercise more. The truth is, exercise doesn't make you lose fat. It's the ability to burn fat that makes you lose fat. And unfortunately, your body may have lost the ability to burn fat for energy. Myth number two, avoid fat. We live in such a fat phobic society. Look at our grocery shelves. All we see is low fat this and fat free that. For the last 40 years, we have been told to avoid saturated fat like the plague. Despite these recommendations, people still gain weight or have trouble losing weight 
crave sugar, have decreased energy and enthusiasm, and suffer from a long list of health complications. Understand this. Good fats help your body burn fat. It's the vegetable oils that are the bad guys, not the saturated fats like we've been told. Saturated fats and cholesterol are actually the good guys. Yes, cholesterol is your friend. Every cell in your body needs it. Deficiencies in cholesterol can lead to depression, cancer, low libido, and can make you more susceptible to strokes. Cholesterol acts as an antioxidant. It protects your skin from damage, fights infection, and supports glucose metabolism. Personally and clinically, I have witnessed how increasing good, healthy fats have helped people lose weight, gain energy, and reverse chronic symptoms. You can be overweight and fat deficient. Without the proper fats in your diet, your weight loss and health goals can be a frustrating uphill battle. So don't be afraid of good fats such as olive oil, coconut oil, and butter. These fats nourish your cells. Your brain and nerve cells depend on fat and cholesterol to be healthy. Myth number three, eat more whole grains. We have been told to eat less exercise more, avoid saturated fats and cholesterol, and to eat three to five servings of whole grains every day. But since we have been given that advice, obesity and heart disease has become an epidemic in this country. I had a love affair with grains, so busting this myth personally changed my life. 70 pounds ago, I was faithfully eating my oatmeal for breakfast and frequently enjoyed rice or pasta for lunch or dinner. Even though I was avoiding all the whites, like white flour and white rice, the pounds were not coming off fast enough. In other words, this myth not only made me fat, it kept me fat. Reducing grains played an essential role in normalizing my glucose and insulin levels, as well as losing my weight clearing my skin, stabilizing my mood, improving my sleep, and eliminating my headaches. Decreasing my carb intake reduced the fat that is normally stored and allowed my body to use fat instead of glucose for energy. With the increase of good fats, I noticed that my appetite was satisfied and many times I did not feel hungry throughout the day. This is one of the main reasons why many of you can't sustain a lot of these weight loss programs. So in order to accelerate healthy weight loss, focus on creating a healthy lifestyle and stop following mainstream programs that are pretty much based on one or more of these myths. The Journey to Healing Food Shopping Guide is your resource to making healthier food choices next time you go to the grocery store. Grab your copy today at HealthyShoppingHabits.com. Healing starts in the kitchen. Begin your journey to healing today. Go to HealthyShoppingHabits.com. Once again, that's HealthyShoppingHabits.com. Now that I've laid down the groundwork, let's zoom in on strategy number one. Prioritize your nutrition. What you put in your body plays a pivotal role in your weight loss journey. The standard American diet has changed so much in the last 150 years that we are in a state where we now eat more chemicals than we eat nutrition and it is making us sick and fat. Traditional diets of whole foods, which were locally raised and consumed fresh, have been replaced by diets of stripped, depleted, unbalanced, altered, denatured, artificial, and highly processed foods. The increased intake of high-calorie, low-nutrition foods, which are widely available, heavily promoted, cheap, and served in large portions, is creating a toxic food environment. These toxic foods are highly advertised. People eat considerably more than they have in the past. Food is readily accessible and it takes no time or energy to prepare. And people eat outside of the home more than ever. These foods, which lack nutritional value, are toxic and the fat tissue is used as a toxic waste dump site. In other words, people are eating too much of what they do not need 
and not nearly enough of what they do need in order to be healthy and lean. Making healthier food choices doesn't mean saying goodbye to the joy of eating. Being healthy doesn't mean boring. It's about making mindful decisions. It's about learning to eat, to live by providing your body with the essential elements such as vitamins, minerals, proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. This is what our bodies need to function. Start by incorporating whole unprocessed foods whenever possible. And you can start by downloading the Healthy Eating Food Shopping Guide. After listening to this episode, go to HealthyShoppingHabits.com for your free copy. It's essential to view food not just as a means to comfort you or entertain you, but as fuel for your body. You want to eat in a way that sustains many of the functions your body performs daily. This includes maintaining your energy levels, supporting your cognitive function, and promoting your overall well-being. Now, I can't move on without talking about the elephant in the room, ultra-processed foods. Now, these foods are often loaded with added sugars, unhealthy fats, and preservatives. While they may be cheap, while they may be convenient, they can and will hinder your weight loss efforts. The empty calories, lack of nutritional value, and toxic content combined with a high-stress lifestyle is an ideal recipe for sickness and disease. Speaking of stress, let's move on to strategy number two to accelerating healthy weight loss. Manage your stress. You've got to manage your stress and more importantly, understand how stress can negatively impact your weight loss journey. When I'm talking about stress, I'm not referring to your daily routine, your work and home responsibilities. I'm also referring to emotional stress, your unresolved stress, your anxiety, your fears. When your stress becomes chronic, it can trigger the release of an inflammatory hormone called cortisol. Cortisol plays a role in storing fat, particularly around the abdominal area. So stress just doesn't happen in the mind. Stress can manifest itself physically and affect your weight loss goals. I often tell my patients how stress can sabotage a perfect diet. Some of you are struggling to lose weight because you are stressing about the progress you don't see. So we need to focus on the action of making healthy choices and allow the results to happen. So please stop stressing about that number on the scale. Now let's talk about managing stress. One effective approach is incorporating relaxation techniques into your daily routine. And this could be meditation, breathing techniques, or even a simple walk in nature. The goal is to find what resonates with you and it makes you feel centered and calm. You got to identify the stressors in your life. Is it work-related, personal relationships, finances? Once you pinpoint the sources, you got to start working on solutions instead of using food to comfort you. Don't be afraid to delegate tasks or set boundaries. Your mental and physical well-being should be your priority. And if you consider yourself to be an emotional eater, the underlying issue is your inability to manage stress and you use food and it's usually the unhealthy foods to comfort you. I've witnessed the transformations in other people's lives when they get honest about their stressors. And I had to do that. I got really good at masking my pain. I got really good at masking my emotional distress. But over time, when you start to hide those emotions and start to walk around like everything is okay, it starts to manifest externally. And over time, they do manifest as illness, as weight gain, as emotional outbursts. So we can't wait till we get to this point. We can't keep hiding behind our stress. We can't hide by using food to comfort us. 
We got to get honest with ourselves and learn to address it and find solutions and ways to manage it before it really builds up inside. So remember, it's not just about weight loss. It's not just about that number on the scale. It's about creating and sustaining a healthy lifestyle, a healthy mindset, managing our stress and successful weight loss is the result of that. So please understand this. Managing stress is a necessity and should be managed daily because it plays a huge role in your health and your weight loss journey. Now let's discuss strategy number three, have a support system. This is a crucial element that often gets overlooked because it is easy to isolate yourself and feel alone when embarking on a weight loss journey, but it doesn't have to be that way. We can't do it alone. If you could do it alone, you would have done it by now. So it's important that we have a supportive system in our lives. There have been numerous studies that consistently show that having a support system significantly increases the chances of success in reaching your weight loss goals or any goals. So whether online or in person, being part of a group with similar goals creates a shared experience. You can exchange tips, you can celebrate your victories and find understanding and start to learn from your challenges. And also in a support system, you can learn from each other's mistakes. And also remember that it's a reminder that you are not alone in this journey. You don't have to live with the shame and the guilt. You start to learn from your pain and transform it to power. Don't be afraid to invest in a therapist, a coach, or a mentor who understands what you have been through and is able to guide you in the process. Sometimes when we don't know what we don't know, we need someone that's been there to guide us because it may be possible to do the research and figure out on your own, but I've learned that it takes so much longer. It's so much easier to find someone that has been there and that can guide you through it. So don't be afraid to do that because I know we live in a society where it's hard to trust people and we don't know what their agendas are. But when you start to get into this journey, you're going to make mistakes, but that's the only way to learn is by getting out there and understanding what your needs are. And the more you understand your needs, the more you'll be able to find that person who can guide you into reaching your goals. There are people out there that can provide the knowledge, that can provide the skills, that can provide the systems that will get you unstuck to get you from where you are to where you want to be. So we really got to stop hiding behind our struggles. Don't be ashamed to reach out. Don't be ashamed to ask for help. I had to reach out and I live and breathe this stuff. There's even things that I didn't know. I'm constantly learning. So we got to humble ourselves and just realize that we don't know it all. And when you're stuck, we have to be okay with reaching out. And I'm going to warn you, yes, you might end up reaching out to the wrong person, but as you gain clarity and as you start to understand yourself and as you start to get the information, you'll start to realize what works and what doesn't. And you'll start to resonate with the people around you. And then they'll begin to share their experience and share who they work with. So that's really how it worked for me and a lot of the other women that I have worked with in the past and now. So again, stop hiding behind your struggles and realize that it may be your time to reach out. And I do understand how uncomfortable it is to share your vulnerabilities. I get it, especially As women of color, we try to be strong and be the rock for everyone else, but we are not forgiving and loving of ourselves. And I know how it is to feel the need to hide behind our struggles and pretend that everything is okay. But reaching out for help was the best decision I ever made. And there's nothing more powerful than admitting that you can't do it all and that you can't be everything for everybody. Finding a support system is not a sign of weakness. It is actually a sign of strength 
and it is a very smart strategy for success. So don't underestimate the power of community. All you have to do is find the right one. Now, there is so much more I can say about this, but just remember to accelerate your weight loss journey. You must, must, must prioritize your nutrition. We got to eat to live, not live to eat. The purpose of food is to provide energy in our bodies so our bodies can function. We got to manage our stress. Like I said before, you can have the perfect diet, but if you're under a lot of stress, it can sabotage your health and your weight loss goals. And also find your support system. Stop hiding. Find a group of like-minded people who want to support you. Don't try to do this alone. And I encourage you today to set a strong foundation by applying these three strategies. A lot of our frustration comes from either the all or none principle, or we just want the weight to come off quickly and easily. But unfortunately, that is not the case for the majority of us. You didn't gain the weight overnight, so you can't expect to lose it overnight. You also can't expect to lose the weight with the same mindset and the same habits that created it. Focus on the systems to regain your health and the weight loss will take care of itself. Thank you for tuning in. Check out the resources in the show notes. Don't forget to download your free copy of the Healthy Eating Food Shopping Guide. And feel free to share your thoughts and questions in the comments. And until next time, go out there and achieve more freedom in your health and your life. Take care. Thank you for listening to today's episode. If you enjoyed the show, seal the deal to heal by leaving a review, subscribing to the podcast, and sharing with a friend. Thanks again, and we'll continue the journey next week.